All right, Tom Abbott, are you there? I am. Are you new? I, I apologize if you're not. Oh yeah, um, definitely new. Um, definitely. I'm from Okta. Okta, O. K T A. Oh. Ah. Okay. O K T A. O K T A. Thank you. You're going to be a regular on here, I hope. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Well, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Varun, are you there? Hey there, again. Yeah, here. Morning. Morning. All right, who from the pivotal side do we have today? Maybe you guys can add your name to the agenda. Thomas, you there? Thomas, you on mute? Hey, we're here. Hey, uh, hey. Rachel's here as well. I'm here oh, Rachel. Excellent. Thank you. Rachel, gotcha. Thomas, while we're waiting for you, I was just noticing uh, you made a comment on an issue related to the distributed tracing stuff. Does that satisfy your AI, or does your AI uh, specifically mean a PR? Uh, so the original, I think I had one AI that I basically uh, added on the issue. I'm filing this to report my findings. So that was my AI, uh, and it can be auto-closed at a later time. Okay, so all market is done then. The interesting thing, though, is I found out that there's a separate directory under the open tracing spec that has something that might come back again as a potential avenue for correlation ID. Mm -hmm. So um, we can chat talk, talk about that a little later if we'd like. Okay. Austin, are you there? Hi, Doug. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh, Jim Curtis, you there? Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Let's see. Who's at 925-699-0277? Good morning, this is John Mitchell. I'm stuck in the car. Ah, I gotcha, okay, I got you on the agenda, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Klaus, you there? Yes, I'm here, hello. All right, all right, what about Chris Borchers? Yep, I'm here. All right, thank you. Do, 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 do. It's like a little bit of a game here. I see the list changing, but then I have to figure out where the new name appears in the list because it tends to jump around. Hmm. I feel like your autocorrect does not like my name starting with a K, Doug. <laughs> well, you never know whether it's the autocorrect or just my bad typing. <laughs> Either one's a very good suspect. I assume that's the pivotal guys, right? Mark Fisher. Yes, hi. Hello. Uh, what about Jurgen? Yes. And Thomas? Yes. And Scott? Yes. OK. <laughs> Sounds like the same voice, but I won't say anything about that. <laughs> They're all here. They really are. <laughs> I believe you. OK. All right. What about Michael? Michael Payne? Yeah, that's me. All right. Gotcha. Uh, da -da -da. William, are you there? William, you there? Yeah, I'm Kathy? here. All right. What about Kathy? Yeah, I'm here. Excellent. Thank you. Would you want another minute or so? What about Cooper, Marcus? I'm here. Hi. Right. Are you new? I apologize if not. Yes. No, Can I'm you... new. Uh, my name's Cooper. Uh, I work on the ecosystem and product at Kong. We're an open source API gateway in Kong Ingress. Uh, Kubernetes ingress controller, and I'm here to learn a bit more about the serverless working group and how we might uh, extend Kong to support uh, serverless and Kubernetes. Cool. Thank you. And is it KONG? That's correct. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, cool. Thank you much and welcome. Uh, David Lyle. Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Let's see. Who else am I missing? I know I'm missing somebody. Clemens. Just show uh, up. Do I have to? Okay, Clemens. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, you have to. Even, All right. even though it's a public holiday, so technically I'm not here. Yes. All right. Uh, table, we'll give another 30 seconds or so till 12.04 my time, then we'll get started. Is there anybody else I'm missing on the agenda? Doug, this is Arun. I'm here as well. Ah, Arun. Great. Thank you. Let's spell your name right. All right. Anybody else I'm missing? Thank you, everybody. Okay. Tell you what. Why don't I go ahead and get started? Let me move the list. All right, so um, Arun, did you want to talk about your your AI? I will, yeah, totally. Um, um, thank you for the reminder, actually, first of all. I was just in the process of sending an email, and I, got, I guess I got to figure out which email ID am I subscribed to, because when I tried to join using argu at amazon.com, it says that is already part of the working group, but when I try to send an email with argu from argu at amazon.com, it says the message was rejected. Um, so I guess I need to figure out that exact logistics on the email ID. I don't want to send it from my personal Gmail ID. Um, so once that is sorted, I have the email drafted ready. You know, I sent it out. So um, I'm happy to send that out. So that's yeah. one part of it. To just let you know, I, I ran into a similar issue yesterday. And what I had to end up doing was rejoining the group and giving them a password and stuff like that. So um, look for an email from me from last night with a URL to the, to the URL to join. Yeah, and that's what I went, you know, I mean, I literally went over there. So when I go to the URL that, okay, um, join this um, user group or join this working group, it says this email ID address is already registered to use it, log in. So I guess, you know, I got to figure out, you know, how do I log in? Because I don't remember joining it from my Amazon ID. Yeah, you got to you got to go through the login process, and you know I can't remember for sure whether I had to say that I lost my password or not. But yeah, I went through that entire login re-registration process, and then yeah. it seemed to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's what I'll do. So hopefully during the call today, I should be able to go through that process and send the email right away. Um, and in the email, uh, I have uh, mentioned that what is the kind of information that I'm looking at. Um, essentially, um, what I'm looking at is. Um, we want to see the customer names on who, who would like us to support this as part of AWS Lambda, why this matter, what problem is it solving, you know, if they have any timelines on the implementation of this, and more importantly, how would they like this format to be supported? You know, is it like you know, natively supported? Is it like you know, as a Lambda function, or is it uh, consuming? Is it generating? Is it both? Is it in a digital format? So that's the kind of detail that I'm looking for. Yep. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. And uh, one more uh, on the related topic. I've been uh, uh, working with the Lambda team quite regularly, kind of giving them update from the serverless working group. Uh, hopefully, uh, starting next working group meeting, Jay Nair, who is one of the PMs in the Lambda team, he should be able to start attending these working group calls regularly. I've been constantly raising the priority of this working group to the Lambda team. We should have a direct representation from the Lambda team itself. That sounds that'd be great. awesome. Yeah, I didn't know Vijay moved to that. I worked with him in um, Amazon WorkDocs, so it'll be good to have him on. It's not Vijay, it's Ajay Nair. Ah, okay, not Vijay Nair. All right. Still good to have somebody on. <laughs> All right, that sounds wonderful. Thank you. All right, then moving forward, let's talk about the face to face vote. Last time I checked, there was a slight winner. Oh. It went the other way. Interesting. A whole bunch of people just voted. <laughs> Completely changed the, the results. Okay, so as of right now, and we did say the vote was going to close at this call. So as of right now, June 15th is the date for the face-to-face, -face, um, which completely messes up my other document that I created. So hold on a sec. So what I'd like to do now is um, I will update this document here. What I started to do is create a document for the face-to-face. -face. Um, I'm going to change this. Um, yeah, <laughs> I know Clemens will be very happy. Um, okay, so what I'd like to do though is get everybody who's planning on attending to add their name to this list as soon as possible. Because one of the things that, actually I think it was Clemens, I think you brought up the question of how many do we need to actually have quorum? Because obviously if we don't have quorum, we may not want to hold the meeting. I mean, we still could, it just won't necessarily be a binding meeting with votes or anything like that. Uh, so. If people are planning on attending, please add your name to the list as soon as possible. And I'm not quite sure what the right number is to, to mandate there or to say that we have quorum. Um, hopefully when we get there, we'll know it. Um, but I'm, my, in my mind, I'm thinking if we can get 
you know, at least eight or so of the uh, voting companies to say, yes, they're going to show up. That might be the right number. Um, but let me just pause there. Are there any questions or comments on that? Um, suggestions for alternatives for determining whether we have quorum, anything? Sorry, I missed the meeting last week. Where, where are we planning to do this face to face? Ah, good point. That will be, as of right now, it will be San Francisco. Okay. And we don't know the exact uh, hosting spot, although I think Austin, you volunteered a location, is that correct? And if that yep. holds through, Google is happy to host too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like if, if needed, like Oracle might also be able to do it if it's in the Bay Area. Yeah, I figure yeah, almost definitely. any company, yeah, almost any of us could probably host if we need to, but Austin jumped in there first, so. Okay, cool. Right, any other questions, comments on the face-to-face -face then? All right, excellent. Thank you guys very much, and thank you all for voting. All right, so next work stream item. Um, as of the last time I checked, which was around 30 minutes ago, we had a clear winner, which was this workflow functions composition one, which got the most votes. Um, we did have one person, I think it might have been Chad, who voted three times and put an asterisk next to that. But even, even if you try to figure out which way he was really going to go, it doesn't change the vote. We still have a very clear winner there. So the question that I have is uh, two things. One is... Can we get someone to answer my question here to give us a little bit more clarity on exactly what we're going to be producing here, right? Is it a specification? Is it a white paper? Just something that we can then uh, take forward when we go to the TOC to propose this next work item because we need to get their approval um, since this is falling under the uh, serverless working group uh, uh, activity, not under cloud events, which is a separate organization. So we need to get TOC's approval for this other work item. So I'd like to get a little more clarity on what we're actually going to be producing there. If someone could help answer that question. Okay, I, I can help answer okay. that. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, the other aspect of this is timing. Uh, do we want to set a milestone for us for when we're going to begin this work? So, for example, do we want to start immediately once we get approval from the TOC? Or do we want to wait until the cloud eventing spec has reached some milestone, for example, 1.0, before we start our work? And the reason I'm asking is because if we start before we reach some milestone like 1.0, we then run the risk of dividing our time and that may impact our forward progress. Uh, so let me pause there and see if there are any comments or, uh, or just comments in general about that. I, I think there is value in uh, having some parallelism because it may impact cloud events, you know, add, adding more metadata, et cetera. Yeah, I think so. Um, also at the beginning, I think there is quite some um, like, you know, what's the functional scope, like, you know, the question you ask, the specification, uh, those need to be sorted out. And then, you know, when we sort out, you know, the some, um, some going deep, we might find out, yeah, we need to some, add some more like metadata attributes to the cloud events. Okay, any other comments? I, just as a me too almost, just uh, I would really feel happier with our spec in general if we, the, the group had more experience building applications out of this. And I think this is a great practice that could even be considered blocking for 1.0. Okay. Anything else? Any other comments? Okay, so in terms of being parallel then, <clears throat> do we, does that mean start immediately once you get approval from TOC or is there a pre 1.0 milestone we'd like to reach? I'm interpreting the previous comments as probably starting as soon as possible, but I don't want to assume. So, so I would think, you know, we can start after the TOC approval. Okay. Any other comments on that? Oh, hold on. All right. Okay, so we'll head down that path then, unless, I'm here, unless I hear any objections. All right, cool. Any other comments then related to the work stream discussion overall? All right, great. Thank you very much. In that case, Kathy, would you like to give a summary of how the uh, correlation ID discussion went the other day? Okay. Um, so, um, so I think uh, the conclusion is um, we will go for um, like uh, kind of like uh, property property bag that format. So we're going to, um, the, the original sender will specify um, some um, 
the key value pair um, in the property, um, under that property, uh, was that, that scope. And then, you know, the, if that event goes through some intermediate um, routers or gateways, and those intermediate um, entities can add um, additional um, properties on top of that. I think we have not reached a conclusion whether um, the additional um, um, the intermediate gateways or, or entities could um, modify, I mean, it could modify, you know, the original um, field, um, but I mean, original key value pair, but we haven't made a um, decision on whether, you know, um, those modifications should be put into the, on top of the original property bag or just, you know, um, just modify the, uh, the original um, key value pair in the original property bag. Yeah, that's pretty much it is. Okay. Um, should the group expect a PR to come soon relative to this discussion or are there, are there more discussions they need to have? Um, Kathy? Oh, okay. So you asked me, okay. I yeah. think we have, oh, sorry. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think we can have a PR for that and then the whole team can, you know, can know what, what specific uh, details. Yeah. Okay, and do you have that? Will, will you be writing that PR? I'm just trying to figure out who the AI should be assigned to. Um, I can do that, or or Clemens, would you like to write that? Oh, is Clemens in the meeting? Yes, he is, but uh, he didn't pay attention for two minutes. So, um, <laughs> what, what what work did you want to assign me? <laughs> I say, do you want to write this? This is what I caught. <laughs> She wants to know if you want to write the PR based upon the correlation ID discussion from yesterday. Um, oh, I can I, write it. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, how, yes, yes. That would be nice if you write it because I have a, I have a ton of stuff to write. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, if I might also suggest uh, one name I might recommend is correlation context just to align with open tracing. It seems like we could even uh, directly say that if we use the same word. You have that, Kathy? Yes. Did you hear what Thomas suggested? Oh, okay. So, sorry. Uh, okay. What, what's that question again? Sorry. Um, there it says correlation ID discussion summary, and I apologize. I missed this. I was on a plane yesterday. Um, the, there exists a header I just discovered for the distributed tracing spec called correlation context. It might fit all of our needs, and it might be nice to use that same name and specify that in HTTP it has the same value. That way we get to align with more specs. Okay, I'll take a look at that. And, uh, and then, you know, I write, write the PR and then, you know, you can give comments or suggest suggestions. I mean, anyone. Sounds great. Okay. All right, great. Any other points of discussion around the correlation ID uh, uh, offline discussion? All right. Cool, thank you. All right, let's move on then to PR review. Um, hey, Doug, so I've, got, oh, I've got one other question for the yeah, group. Um, so we, just to move back uh, one agenda item, seems like there's a lot of interest in that function and event workflow uh, specification. I'm just curious what, uh, it, maybe we could just chat like just for a couple minutes as to what people have in mind there. I know you, you, know, you asked for people to chime in with issues, but um, I wonder if we could just kind of do a quick poll and see what people are, are thinking because uh, there's a lot of interest in there and I'm just wondering what, you know, what they have and what these people have in mind. Sure. Who wants to go first? So maybe Doc, uh, uh, could you pull up the workflow compass? I mean that proposal so people can read that. Yep, there you go. I guess, you know, for me, part of the, a couple of things that come to mind for me are maybe uh, something of a specification or kind of definitions around um, input and output um, expected from, you know, input into one function and output um, of a given function as you go to chain them together. Um, 
Yeah, I think that that will be part of the specification. So from my point of view, I think um, this workflow specification should include like to specify on um, what combination of events triggers what functions. For example, is it like one event trigger that function or is like two events together trigger that function or either of the you know two events or of the three events could trigger that function. And then also is it trigger, does it just, I mean, do the events just trigger one function or trigger multiple functions? Um, if you trigger multiple functions, are those multiple functions um, um, uh, executed in parallel or in sequence? So that's one aspect. And another, or it could be some cases, you know, the in the workflow, right? For example, the second step could like, you know, those functions, some additional <coughs> functions might not be need to be triggered by any event. It just, you know, when they reach that stage, it just start executing that, those functions. And also another aspect is as, you know, Lee brought up. So how the information should be passed between the functions or like, you know, the information should be passed from the events to the function, how those uh, information should be filtered and combined and then passed to the function. And the same will apply to, you know, how the information from one function's execution result should be filtered and then um, combined if there are multiple functions. Okay, then the information, the result should be filtered and then combined with the other functions and then passed to the next function or next uh, uh, sequences of functions. So I think, you know, um, um, two parts. One is you specify, you know, the workflow, what events triggers, what function, how the function are executed in sequence, in parallel, or branching, even branching, you could have some switch state. And then another aspect is how the information are passing between event, from events to functions and between the functions. So Kathy, do you see us actually producing a specification that says this is what well, let me phrase it differently. I understand what you said there, but what's not clear to me is, are we producing some sort of technical specification that says, here's how an application developer specifies the list of functions that get invoked in what order? Or are we just writing a white paper that says, these are the types of broad functionality or broad functional features that a platform should offer? Okay, good question. I, okay, I personally think we should have both. Why is, you know, what kind of function, the scope of functionalities uh, should, will be covered by the workflow. And another is if we can have a, you know, some specification which will be uniform across, you know, any platform, any service platform, that would be good for the user as a user. If I'm a user, right? I just write one, you know, workflow specification and it could be, it could run on, you know, um, Google Cloud or Amazon Cloud, Microsoft, Huawei Cloud, you know, that would be great as a customer. Okay, yeah, but there, are two, uh, there are two aspects here. One is the, you know, definition of the workflow, you know, like, uh, like in step functions, the JSON that describes the, the state transition. The other one is, uh, you know, for example, the message that traverse the cloud events with sort of a correlation ID, workflow ID, you know, other things that need to be passed between one for workflow step to another. So there is, those are two separate things. Do you think we need to do both or one or the other? So I think, you know, correlation ID will be, will, will be implicit, will be part of the workflow specification because for any workflow, right? If it scales out, we must solve the problem. How to, you know, how to, you know, um, how to say it? how to um, send those event to the appropriate uh, workflow instances. Then we need a correlation mechanism to do that. Otherwise you could send, if that workflow is triggered by three, if that workflow involves three events, right? And there are many instances of, the, of each of the, those events. Then how do you know which event sent to which workflow instance? So that's a, a must solved problem if we want to work on the workflow. Right, but you want to specify essentially both, you're saying. Uh, one thing that sounds a little strange that we decided not to define the sort of a spec of a function, but we will define the spec of a workflow. So yeah, we yeah, we define, so when we define the spec of the workflow, the user need to specify, say, which, which key value pairs or which combination of key value pairs that can be used 
I mean, in that of that event that can be used for the work for the, I mean, I mean, by the service platform or any entity to correlate and then to correlate like this event with another event and then send it to the right server, I mean, workflow instance, right? Because the, the serverless platform or any entity handling those events and then trigger, I mean, I mean, triggering those functions or how to say, host or the, uh, instantiate whatever container VM to, to run those functions. Thus, those serverless platform do not know because it's specific to each, each use case application. And the developer of that serverless application knows the best. So the developer, when he specifies the workflow, he needs to specify which, you know, which, which key value pair of, you know, that event can be used, correlate, correlate with the key value pair of another event from another source. By key value pair, do you mean key value pair in the payload or in the cloud event envelope? In the cloud event envelope, yeah, because we already discussed a, um, we, the payload could be encrypted, right? Also, we do not want, you know, the, uh, the service platform to go deep into the payload to... Okay, got it, thanks. Um, so I guess as, as a user, I'm not quite sure how this helps me because does this eliminate the need for me to migrate all of my functions? From, from cloud to cloud or open source project to cloud? Um, is this doing something at that level for me? Or, cause I'm mostly concerned about if I build a bunch of functions for one cloud, can I then transfer it to an open source project without changing all my code and having to go through all the audit and uh, all the build stuff and get it redeployed uh, in a new location that's basically a new application? Yeah, that's what uh, I was saying is that essentially, let's assume you're going to standardize the workflow uh, description, but I, there's no way to standardize the function description. So it seems to be evolution wise that first we need to standardize uh, like a function YAML spec, you know, and then decide how uh, those are sort of chained together in a workflow. Because there's not much value in describing the relations between functions in a spec specification language without being able to define specification for a, a function that will be cross-platform. Um, so yeah. I think you've defined an HTTP transport, which is pretty generic and could be used across things that aren't even functions. So in that case, it feels like we have do have some building block for workflows. Yeah, I mean, I would love to actually define, you know, what take some limited set of features that we believe are important for workflows and actually define their exact meaning. Uh, you know, we believe filtering is important. We must be able to filter at least in these fields. We believe that joining is important. A system should consider, you know, how it does windowing. What do you do when half of the joins drops? There's a lot of things that I think we can come up with a spec that multiple pieces of software can interop with which means that you can have both open source or even proprietary solutions that customer can feel confident that the semantic meaning of their product doesn't change if they go from cloud to cloud. Hmm. Okay, I, I didn't mean to um, uh, hijack the whole conversation, Doug, but it was just useful to, to you know, get a poll of what people are thinking on this subject because there's a lot of excitement. Just wanted to better understand if we were all thinking along the same lines. And overall, I think this is a, uh, an exciting initiative. I don't know if this is like coming up with our own serverless app model, our own workflow spec, our own open API for event-driven workflows kind of spec. Um, but there's, I believe that there's a lot of user problems we could solve here. And this is kind of what serverless is all about, defining these business logic workflows. Um, so I think it's, this is definitely a, a good thing for the working group to tackle. Uh, and it's helpful to hear everyone's opinions on this and hopefully we can get together and get some proposals out there. Yeah, and I, I think, um, I think when, once Kathy puts together a, a crisper definition of what we're actually producing, and Kathy, if you can also include in that the notion of what's in scope, what's out of scope, stuff like that in the proposal, if you can put all that into a Google Doc so that people can review it and, and, and work on it and, and tweak it as necessary. I have a feeling it's going to take a, a several iterations for us to get to something that the entire group agrees with. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So I, I think I'm going to first put the, um, the scope of functionality there first. So mm -hmm. when, 
once we agree on that, then you know we can work on the specification. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, if we can include something so that as a user I can understand why I should find this valuable, because um, as a I what I have seen in other enterprises that a lot of what we're doing is writing a function and we're not really streaming a lot of things together yet. We're not at that level at a lot of companies. I, I don't see as much value in this. So I'd like to know where that value prop is. Yeah, Dan, it's probably, yeah. you're probably about right. It, it might be for those that have built large portions of their application functionality into functions. And then yeah, having that peace of mind that you know, in, in part, like one of the benefits is having that peace of mind that should they need to migrate you know, whole components of their application, which would be you know, chain functions out of one, you know, one system and that it, it could be imported into the next that, that might support the ingest of those workflow definitions. Then it sounds like it might be good to have a target audience for what this type of issue is solving for. Um, to differentiate from uh, who might find value in it. Because I understand that concept that you're, you're talking about. And that, that seems reasonable that some companies uh, would find value, but that'd be a different persona than my company, uh, for example. And to Dan's point, that might even reinforce the notion that we, we, we may do well to do something of a white paper, um, you know, and then there, and then from there, gauge interest as to whether or not a full-blown workflow definition spec should be sought after. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. So I, so I will give some examples on the, you know, some workflow examples so that people can, you know, can see um, the usage scenario, application scenario. Because I, I think, you know, when we really go down the service path, we're going to find out um, the many usage uh, many service use applications are actually not just a simple event trigger, a simple function. It will be, you know, it, it will involve multiple events and multiple functions. Um, yeah, that'd be helpful. Thank you. Okay. All right. Great. And just, and just to chime in on the user demand real quick, um, you know, our, our company's project, the serverless framework, I'd argue kind of already has a very lightweight version of this um, in its serverless, serverless.yaml configuration file. It allows you to kind of model out your application as functions and events. And it's not, um, not a workflow solution yet, uh, but it's a, it's a start at that. And I will say that that, um, that we have, that project had a lot of success. Um, that, that whole idea of modeling out your app as a series of functions and events, I think has, um, has made the serverless application kind of accessible to a lot of people. Um, so I, I think that there's a lot of value here for users uh, and we've seen a lot of demand for wanting to do more on that front. Um, and I think also step functions from AWS um, is a good example of this as well. Yep. All right, cool. Okay. Thank you. With that, I think we should probably move on. I think uh, we're going to go back and like I said, I think we're going to go back and forth a lot once Kathy uh, clarifies or puts down on paper what we're going to be doing here. All right, so cool. Thank you, guys. Uh, moving forward then, PR reviews. So the first one on the list, I actually don't want to uh, review today. It's the NATS transfer binding. I just wanted to bring this up because the NATS team could not make the call today, uh, and it was on the agenda. So I just want to bring this up for people's attention that uh, please review it when you get a chance. It's a, it's a fairly lightweight uh, document. Uh, but we'd like to see if we could try to get that one maybe reviewed and approved next week, unless there's some you know large issues with it. But it seems fairly straightforward. So just uh, just a reminder to please review that one when you get a chance. All right. Next up, uh, Clemens, your MQTTT one. And just remind people, we talked about this one last week, uh, giving people one more week to review it since it seemed like the discussions had died down. Clemens, is there anything you want to mention on this one? I don't think it's changed since last, last week other than I Yeah, I haven't, I haven't changed anything, but it's, um, uh, I think the only open point, and it's something that I still want to go and correct, but I just didn't have the time yet, is uh, there is a, um, I think there's a change we should make across the, the specs with the prefixes for the, uh, for the properties. Um, and um, I don't even know what that is now. Is that a change that you want to get into the PR before we merge it? No, I, I think that's a PR. That's a correction PR. I want to go and do across a few few documents. Okay. So I think I think this is, I think this is good as is, 
Um, and um, there is a, um, if you scroll a little bit further, maybe I spot it because I don't have that open right now. Um, I'll find it. Um, and uh, it's a, it's a minor it's a minor thing. Okay. Well, I have heard from other people that there were some other minor changes that people would like to get in there, and they're okay with doing them as follow-on PRs, like we talked about last week. So yeah. So I would it would be great if you could put this, get that in because it's a fairly meaty one, and then go and just start iterating over it. Right. All right. So with that, are there any discussion points around this people want to bring up? So which which directory? Will this go into uh, the top level one as a sibling to the other uh, files? Oh, okay. I have a the... question, Doug. Has anybody test tested this yet? Nobody really? had tested the MGTT spec before it went in. I think that doesn't mean we shouldn't test our, our work. I wondered if um, if there's any customers or any people that use MQTT validated that this is mm -hmm. useful to them. Uh, the, the IBM people that I have talked to or that have come to certainly think that, that there's that it's useful. Um, yes, I think, so Alex, I think that's a great question. And I think that might be a broader question for uh, go, before we reach 1.0, which of our specifications do we feel comfortable taking 1.0? Because I, I yeah. we probably should not assume that all of them go to 1.0 at the same time. Some may require more uh, uh, reviews or some may require implementations before they go 1.0. I think that's an excellent question, uh, but I don't think you know, holding up this one to a high, or holding this one up to a higher bar than we did for the other ones would really be appropriate at this time, though. I don't think it's about. Um, so maybe I'm not explaining it. I I just mean um, having somebody use it, try to use it. I don't know if anybody's tried to use it as it's lined out right now. Seeing it's going to be a spec might give some good feedback well wasn't wasn't that part of the discussion that we had around when we get to say a 0 0.9 we need to let it bake for some period of time have people implement use yeah. cloud events across it before we can officially call it a 1.0 yeah. so if there's no implementation of mqtt that people have agreed on we could hold up being able to certify it as a 1.0 uh, specification. Yeah. The, the argument you're making, you're making is there can't be a draft un, unless there's an implementation, which is kind of difficult if there's no draft. It, it's labeled a working draft though, right? That's exactly what it is. So what we're doing is we're just kind of, we're creating a clear so hypothesis just, that hopefully people can go test. This is just the draft, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I missed I miss the draft point. Yeah, but, These are but, all everything we have right now is a draft. But Alex, you're, you're, you're making the exact right point, which is, we need people to, to actually. Yeah, I missed the, um, the point that that was a draft. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's just moving it out of, a, out of a PR that no one's going to find to uh, some, something on our main page so people can actually find it and then, that, and then start implementing it. All right. With that, are there any other questions about it? I think um, if I can find the time, I'd be interested in trying this out. Yep. Sounds cool. great. All right, any objections then to approving this one going forward with the assumption that follow-on PRs are always welcome? All right, that's been approved then. Thank you guys very much, hold on. Thank you very much. Nice work, Clemens, yep. and everyone who collaborated on that. This is, uh, this is exciting. Yep. All right, next PR. Uh, I think I think it was two weeks ago. We first talked about an update to the roadmap, and Kathy, I believe, wanted two full weeks to review that. So we have two weeks, or past the two-week milestone now. Um, I've addressed any open questions, comments in there. I think the only outstanding one was actually no, I no, there are no outstanding ones. I addressed them all. Uh, one just didn't vanish because I didn't actually change the line of text. But are there any questions or comments on this? And keep in mind, as with any other document, we can always change the roadmap itself. This is just to provide us a very high level guideposts for our next set of work. Okay, no questions? 
All right. Any objection then to adopting that? All right. Cool. Um, Justin, I don't believe Justin is on the call, but uh, hold on a minute. I think this was just modifying with some of Clemens' text, if I remember correctly. Let's just double check here. On on this topic, Clemens, did John McCabe from OpenFast speak to you about the Azure event grid? It seemed like we were missing the content type for application JSON. Um, I can't recall right now. It seems like this might be the, the related issue here. I think what we observed with the, was that with um, Azure Event Grid, we weren't getting content type application JSON and some of the um, messages, either the handshake or the cloud event. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, um, the content type is, uh, is um, the content type that's defined here um, is actually for the data and we didn't put the, uh, um, uh, yeah, we don't put that in there. In the map, in the HTTP header. Uh, well, the HTTP header is for the we do we use the HTTP header, and the HTTP header is for the um, um, for the overall payload. And then okay. the content type is uh, inside of the payload is for the data element. And we okay. omit that because we omit that. It, we we omit that because it's it's um, it's only significant if the uh, okay. If the payload, if the data payload differs, if it's not, if it's inline JSON, then you don't need to go and provide it. That's interesting. So the assumption is for, for the work group, everybody agrees that the, the payload is always JSON, and do you only think it's something else if there's a if there's a. Header? I'm, this is how we implement this right now. It's, I'm just telling yeah. you, right? So that's that's um, uh, that might even be wrong. Um, I'm not saying that's right. I'm just telling you what it is. But that's, but that's, that's, that's one particular implementation choice, right? Yes. So right. the implementation choice is that we, that we, if the, if the payload is already JSON, we don't that's declare the, implementation. Yes, we don't declare the, the data, the data payloads any further. Um, because then you don't need to decode it. You don't need to have a hint you need to have a hint if the base, if the, if data is a field that's a string that contains base 64, then you kind of need yeah. to have a hit, otherwise you don't. So I think though this PR is mainly just trying to add the add some text around the fact that not everybody follows the, the plus JSON type of syntax and this is mm -hmm. allowing for others to be there. Mm. So, uh, Kremen, did you want to yeah. talk to this one at all or, or do you think it's pretty self-explanatory? Mm. Clemens? Is this the issue that OpenWhisk had that you mentioned on Twitter about plus media type? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. No, Jason, you must translate it. So I have a question. Here the data means the payload, right? No, I think it's talking yeah. about the data. The data yeah, like itself. it. Um, in which um, is that in the JSON mapping spec? Yes. 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 Yeah, I think I agree with that. So does the data mean the payload here? Or? Yeah, the content type. The content type is always, is always about the data payload. Okay. So the point the point that's being made here is that um, if it's known to be a JSON type, if it's known to be a JSON type but it doesn't follow, it's not either application JSON or it doesn't use the plus JSON, but it uses, it's one of these other types, then you should still, and it's known to be JSON, you sh should still treat it as JSON. That's the point. So I, and, and I agree with that point. All right. Any other questions or comments on that? As I said, I don't think it really changes much, it just, just makes it clearer that some people that don't follow the, the specifications, the RFCs that we list in here. Um, I might make it clear that, that we're just uh, not mentioning JSON because you don't have to specify it when you're not cross encoding. So for example, uh, if you had, if we define an HTTP XML envelope, then you obviously would need to dictate when you switch to JSON. It's not that JSON is special, it's that having the same encoding for envelope and data is special. That's correct. 
it, so it's a default. It, it, that sounds default. like a separate issue, though, isn't it? I mean, isn't that almost saying if content type is missing? Hold on a minute. Is content type required or optional? I thought it's so. optional. Is it? Let's just double check. Because if it's optional, then I agree. We probably need to clarify that. But if it's required, then I don't think what you guys are saying is necessarily accurate. Yeah, it's optional. It's optional. Okay. Okay. Right. So then adding clarifying text that says when it's not there, it's assumed to be the same um, content type as the envelope itself. That sounds like a separate issue. That would more... be ideal. Um, yeah. because we ran into that when trying to integrate with this. Yeah. So would someone like to take the action item to open up a PR to, to clarify that? I mean, I opened my mouth so I can do it. <laughs> Excellent. I'll teach you. Okay. Thank you, Thomas. Okay, so then back to this PR itself. Does the text in here look sufficient or look appropriate to people? Okay, any other questions or comments then on this one? Any objection to adopting it? All right, not hearing any. Approved, thank you guys very much. Oops, there we go. All right, Thomas, are you ready to talk about your source label PR? Sure, I can try to page fault that into memory. <laughs> um, I think it, it sounds like we're in many ways converging, like my intention was for these labels to be the same as what uh, I think we're calling correlation context. Um, I was just in some sense strongly hinting that since uh, a lot of CNF software uses the word label, that that was my default stance. But I think in, in terms of how we want to use it, uh, it sounds like we're co consolidating. Okay, so does that mean that once Kathy's PR for her other bag of stuff thing, it will subsume this PR? Or Kathy, would you want me to just change the word labels to correlation context? Um, that's fine. Um, I think we we I think we said we okay. I think correlation context that's good for me. Yeah. Hang on, hang on a second. One of those sounds like plain English that's super easy to understand, and the other one sounds like jargon. Why? Uh, uh, why are we diverging from labels? Because well. There is a, an existing header that has meaning for this called correlation context. And uh, my first stance is that like, a new name. If, I, I would suggest this should be projected in HTTP as the correlation context header. Just, so, just to, to clarify again, at the face to face, we talked about two types of labels one which are source tagged and, and couldn't be modified, the other ones that are sort of, uh, let's call it transport or routing tagged and could be added along the way. So A, are we going to specify both? And I assume that this one is the first. Honestly, unless someone twists my arm, uh, I would just say that we use what uh, correlation context has been converging on, which is that each hop can modify this. So I'm, a little, I, I'm a little confused because I could have sworn on yesterday's phone call there was a lot of discussion about different types of attributes, labels, correlation IDs, whatever you want to call them. And we wouldn't, and weren't necessarily going to define the exact meanings of these various things. All we knew that, all, all we knew was there, there was going to be a bag to put stuff. And sometimes it may have been for correlation. Sometimes it may be for source identification. We weren't necessarily going to get into defining what that meant. We we're just going to put a bag someplace. Um, Calling something correlation ID or correlation whatever sounds an awful lot like we're putting semantics around these things and not just creating a bag. So I'm a little confused. The correlation ID, I, I see H, I see request ID and correlation context are the two bits used in the HTTP protocol. Is that right? Uh, it's trace state. In existing trace 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 like ASP.NET. Oh, in distributed tracing, it's. Um, trace parent and correlation context. I think probably, you know, um, Thomas, mm -hmm. uh, how about this? I, 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 I'm going to write the PR to reflect what we discussed. I think there are two parts. One is, you know, 
um, we're going to um, put in the uh, the key value pairs for the the sender could specify it's on the, we can call it properties or we can call it um, correlation context. I guess that keyword, either way, I'm fine. And then on top of that, you know, um, the intermediate gateway or routers can also put additional um, property bag or context bag um, on top of the regional sender's um, property um, bag. Are they using the same namespace or second namespace? You mean the namespace? Like, is it, is it, do the original sender and middleware have different property bags that they fill? Yeah, so we, we discuss if they have, uh, the middleware has additional, um, uh, additional key value pair, they would like uh, um, that, you know, would like to put that on, add on top of that. But uh, if it's existing, you know, like if that key value pair is already in the original sender's um, context bag or party bag, then just modify there. That's that part we have not reached a quite consensus, but I'm going to just put it out like that and then people can comment. So uh, just if to try now. Just for this written in uh, Slack, I just wrote a wall of text today. Doug, if you could switch to that to at least have something. Like what we talked to at the meeting yesterday wasn't written anywhere and I wrote that example and it might help. It's in Slack in the cloud event thing group channel. Yeah, I'm not sure I can share my Slack right now, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, this is another reason why we should try to test some of this work because we, we're trying to make assumptions about how the labels are going to be used. We could at least specify maybe a few examples, even if they're not fully tested in implementation. Well, it also sounds to me as though uh, Thomas and Kathy are at least on the same page relative to merging their work together. And it's more a question of the shape of the bag, whether it's one bag or two bags and that kind of stuff. So I'm wondering whether it makes sense to wait for Kathy's PR. To, and then we can start hashing over that. I also have another co yeah. potential concern about the, the labels. Um, having got slightly stung with trying to put characters into Kubernetes labels, um, they, they have quite a strict um, thing about what you can add there, but you can't have spaces. Um, I guess we should, if, if we do have these in Kubernetes, they need to be in annotations instead. They, they've got a freer specification. What does that regex allow for? Does it allow spaces? Uh, I tried to copy the Kubernetes label regex actually, um, because I expect- Because the example uh, given by, oh, sorry. Um, the assumption was that, you know, Kubernetes is growing, it's CNCF, um, and Kubernetes already has a precedent for routing using label selectors. And so that's what I was planning to end up building actually was a label selector sort of thing that would use this field and field native to Kubernetes. Yeah. I see something in the labels um, provided by, um, I think, Vlad in that Slack channel. I didn't know that channel existed actually. Um, and he's got some arrays within the labels, and there's also spaces within the, the values. I don't yeah, think that's all. we could represent that in the Kubernetes lab labels. Yeah, but that, I don't necessarily think you should look at that as, let's say, a concrete proposal quite yet. I'd, I'd rather wait for Kathy's PR, and then we can go through those low, lower level details, because I don't think the exact character yeah. set is, is critical at this point. That's, a, that's not the highest order bit, to put it that way. Right. Yeah. I'd like I, to look at when to... it's converged. If someone can ping me when, the, when there's a PR. Uh, well, the PR one thing I, I want to try and again to understand, is there a consensus there's going to be a one set of labels, just you know, one for source and routing, or is, the, is there is no consensus on that? There's no consensus yet. So how about, how about we do this? Because in last meeting, we did not really, you know, um, uh, got the chance to, to discuss everything and reached uh, full consensus. How about I do a doodle pool for another meeting? I think that's what we we said in the, at the end of the meeting. And then, you know, we joined that meeting and then we reached a uh, full consensus. And then I'm going to write the PR. How about yeah, that? I would agree. And Kathy, I would suggest that you try to get the meeting as early as possible next week because you may need more than one meeting. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Thomas, uh, are you going to join this time? I hope you can join because you have this PR. Yeah. Uh, what time is the meeting? Uh, I'm going to do a do a uh, do the pool. So give several time slots, and then you know to select the the time the, the time slots that most people can join. Okay. I will I will fill out my availability. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to send it to the uh, the work group uh, email about that pool link. Okay. Thank you. All right, cool. So watch for another doodle poll to come out. Thank you guys very much. Um, but, but, but we have five minutes left. Tell you what, I don't think we can necessarily deep dive into anything, <clears throat> but let me do this. Clemens has a PR out there for the AMQP transport uh, and binding or map system mapping, a type mapping thing. Um, I think the PR has been out there for a while. I don't believe there have been any major controversial points raised uh, Clement, is there any reason for us not to shoot for review and approval next week, or are there still outstanding large items on this one? I don't see anything in here yet. Um, there are no large items on this. Okay. I did have a question there, which wasn't uh, addressed, I think, around the similarities between the HTTP and AMQP. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Where is it? Oh, there we go. So can you address this comment, Clement, at some point before next week? Um, Yes, yes, yes. So um, I, I thought that was clear because the uh, um, uh, the MQP binding um, exists solely so that you can. So the MQ, MQP type mapping is actually not as complete as the JSON type mapping um, because um, the um, MQP is kind of tied to the protocol. But I made the type mapping such that you can go and map the 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 um, attributes of cloud events into the header section or actually the property section of the MQP message um, so that you can do the, my, the binary mode um, specifically for that purpose. What I didn't do is I didn't specify out the entire uh, type mapping as I do with JSON, like with the self-contained format. While you can do this with the MQP protocol, you can express uh, message bodies in the MQP type encoding. It's something that we in practice in the community don't really encourage because the MQP um, encoders are typically tied into the messaging stacks, which means if you want to go and route the messages further, then you have to go and unpack them, which is not true for JSON. Like you can go and take a JSON and, and forward it on and then you know, down the line somewhere decode it. Um, and that's not really possible with the reality of the MQP stacks. That's why I kind of made the MQP, MQP data format only half, um, right. only for the properties. It was a different point, Clemens. It was that uh, like in HTTP binary mode, you have like C underscore something, something. And yeah, yeah, yeah. MQP, it was sort of something else. And then- uh, I'm gonna make those, every... that's, that's, that's the thing that I meant earlier. I wanna make those things, things the same and just make the prefixes the same. Sure. Yeah. So that wasn't clear for me. If you could just clarify. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, that's something. That's something that I still want to go do to make that the same. I just don't have the the key solution to this yet. But um, um, I'll I'll make I'll pick a common prefix or a, a model. We I had a discussion with Doug about this uh, before the meeting about something that's kind of similar. So we'll have to find a, a good way to do this, but I don't have a good idea just yet. Yeah, we just don't want to have a transfer specific logic for translating. Yes, I, I agree. Yep. Okay. Excellent. But that is that a change you're going to make to this PR, or is that a follow on PR? I get the sense of the follow on that's PR. A follow, that's a follow on PR to um, all the mappings. That's what I thought. Okay. And it's probably going to fall since the HTTP mapping is already kind of done. It's probably going to fall that way. Okay. So it's going to dash. Can you do me a favor, though? Just put a comment uh, in response to Euron's comment here, saying what the what you're planning on doing, meaning the follow-on PR to address not just ANTP but all of the transports. Yeah, I will do that. Excellent, thank you. All right, so uh, please, everybody, make a chance to review this PR with the hopes of merging in this again draft specification, uh, so that we can get it into there for people to review and start implementing. Uh, hopefully we'll get that done next week. And with that, I think we're pretty much done. Let me just quickly go through the agenda. I mean, not the agenda, the list of attendees. Uh, Joe Sherman, you there? Yes, I am. All right, Stanley, you there? Yep. Uh, Glenn Block? Yep. Evan, I don't know your last name, unfortunately. Anderson? 
Anderson, thank you. And what about David Baldwin? Uh, here. Thank you. Is there anybody, oops, Anderson. Is there anybody I missed on the list of attendees? Uh, Mark, I know you're there, I gotcha, and Alex. Is there anybody else I missed? I think you've got, you've got me on there a bit higher up, yeah. Yeah, Thanks. I gotcha, yep. All right, anybody else that did not get on the attendee list? All right, great, thank you. And just a final reminder, please add your name to the serverless work group Google Doc face-to-face -face, so we know who's gonna be coming and we, whether we're gonna have quorum or not. As of now, we got what, um, five 15th people? 15th of June, this is the, is that the last day of DockerCon. Do you know what time you're looking at for that at the moment? I'm assuming it's an all day face-to-face, -to, -face, to be honest. Um, all day face-to-face -face will conflict with that event. Yeah, but yeah, DockerCon, but it's, DockerCon it's, is just repeats that day. I thought it might be an hour or, or two hours or something like that. So let's, no. okay, we got a minute or so. Let's talk about this. Uh, what, what were people thinking? I was assuming all day, but maybe I'm wrong. What, are the, what were other people thinking? Yeah, I think we need all day. I think so. Yeah, I, I, I mean, think it's there, too much. <laughs> there will be people that have commitments at DockerCon that can't, um, that can't be there all day. Right, so they may either not show up at all or, or make it part of it and put, put down on the, in the list of, a, of planning to attend people, but then whether you can make it for all day or just part of the day, that'll help us decide whether we have quorum. Yeah, all, maybe all you should discuss that after we have an agenda, right? We don't have an agenda yet. Not yet, that's true. Other than open PRs and open issues, yeah. I'm gonna fly in for just for that. So um, if it's all day, I would prefer if it was, if we would maximize the time. Yep. Hey, Doug, uh, Michael Payne here. I'm not a voting member, but I'd like to attend. Is that okay? I can put my name, name down? Of course, of course, of right. course, of course. This is for everybody. Where is the doc? Uh, it, uh, it's listed in the agenda. I'll make it more clear. I'll put, I'll put it someplace else, but right here, there's a sign-up doc. I'll add it to the top of the uh, agenda doc someplace. All right. All right, so cool. Thank you guys very much. We'll talk again next week. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks, Doug. Yep. Bye.